and welcome back to the Pure Nintendo podcast. My name is Gemma, and with me today I have special Pure Nintendo guests once again. I have Trev. Welcome back, Trev. Yeah, glad to be back. And Kirk, thank you for joining us again, Kirk. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Glad to be back. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, we've had another pretty big week in Nintendo, the world of Nintendo. We've got a few things to talk about today. We're going to discuss the new Mario Kart tracks as well as the new Mario movie trailer. And then we're going to get into some discussion about E3 and conferences in general and any games that we're playing at the moment. So let's kick things off with the new Mario Kart tracks, which just got released. This is wave four that was just released last Friday. And I believe, Trev, you have been having a bit of a go at them. What do you, what do you uh, think yeah. so far? In fact, I, I might have been having a go seconds before we hit record <laughs> for the show. So. I love that. I do. I'm jealous, actually. I was hoping we'd have time to play before the show, to be honest, but <laughs> maybe uh, afterwards. <laughs> well, well, maybe it's good we didn't, because if we did... I might have to talk about how terrible I am. But. <laughs> <laughs> or or we would just never be recording because we'd be just playing too much. Because, I mean, <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think you know, I'm a pretty big Mario Kart fan. I've been playing it since the Super Nintendo original. Um, so I'm a huge fan. And I'm currently writing up a review of these tracks, which I've done for the last three waves. So I'm really excited to do that. Um, so I guess let's look at the, the cups. So we've got two new cups as per usual. We've got... What do we got this time? We've got the fruit cup and the boomerang cup. Um, I know it kind of just seems a bit obscure or random, but I love the cup names. Like I just love that they're taking these new objects. You know, we're very used to the mushroom cup and the lightning cup and the star cup, but I love the addition of all these new items. Um, and then the tracks themselves, I think we're pretty used to seeing some of the city tracks from tour to kick off each of these new cups. Um, and this time we're, we're, treated with Amsterdam and Bangkok. Actually, there are three this time, right? Because there's Singapore yeah. as well. There's That's a, interesting. Yeah. Three. Yeah. And I had thought we were running out of cities. <laughs> from, from <laughs> <laughs> But I suppose there are a lot of cities and I don't – I mean, I haven't played Mario Kart Tour for a while. Have either of you been playing that one on mobile? I have sure? never yeah. played Mario never. Kart Tour, which oh, wow. is partly why I, I kind of gravitate towards the tour tracks because mm -hmm. – for me, they're brand new. Yes, true, true. I have, just, yeah, I don't really do mobile uh, as a rule, so mm -hmm. uh, I kind of, yeah, I feel like for each DLC wave, um, those are the tracks I kind of focus on initially, just because mm -hmm. they're a fresh experience. Not that I don't love, you know, DK Summit or some of these other mm -hmm. classic tracks, but I have played them before, and yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sort of getting used to the tour layout in terms of like you know how they flow in loops and whatnot yes yeah they're kind of a different style aren't they because they do it's almost like each lap is different in the in the way that they take you through the course which keeps it really yeah they keep changing like black <laughs> directions and then you're like ah. yeah yeah and sometimes when you're winning and you don't know if you don't know the course well enough you're sort of driving through and no one's in front of you to follow and you're just suddenly like i don't know which way to go <laughs> It's all theoretical. I don't think I've ever been winning, but <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your CC of choice? Are you doing 100, 150, or the the dreaded 200? <laughs> what are we doing? Well, I, I do them all just so I can get, um, you know, the for, for completionists, so I can get a trophy in every, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So I'll start with 50, which is all, even for me, 50 is a little too easy. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. Hundreds, even hunt. You know what? I guess I'm not as bad as I think. Just playing the computer. <laughs> it's really when I play like against you guys that I realize <laughs> I'm not that good. But yeah, I'll do. I'll do them all. I don't really do. Um, was it 200? Mm, the super. I haven't fun. done too much yeah. of that. But yeah, I feel like yeah, I, try, I try to do them all just because I like to. Uh, you know, when I cycle through, I like to see I have, you know, three stars mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. for or whatever the rating is. You know, yes. for. I know. I love seeing that as well. It's like a little checklist and you just tick it off as you go. Yeah, <laughs> and so then when you see like the weird one where you only have two and you're like, what happened there? Like, I don't remember. <laughs> well, because you'll be doing a cup and you'll get like first, first, first for the first three. And then something random will happen. You'll be blue shelled or something will happen in the very final seconds of the last track. It's true. It's always the last one. Yeah. And then you have to do them all again. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's super annoying. But also, I mean, it's a fun game anyway, so it's fine to replay it. But yeah, I think 200cc for me is kind of my Achilles heel when my family plays and I, I'm, I'm not like the best Mario Kart player. Like Justin will beat me quite easily in our team. But at home, I'm generally the best. Like I would usually win. So when they want to... You know, <laughs> pull me down a well, peg. How old are your kids now, Jim? I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my eldest does beat me sometimes, to be fair, and uh, he's just turned twelve. So, yeah, he's he's not too bad. But um, generally speaking, I'm the best. And when they but when they want to win, uh, or I need a bit of a challenge, we do the two hundred cc, and I I don't win. I just I can't handle it. I don't break in any other cc. I just don't. I just always have the accelerator on and I power slide my way through the tracks. But with 200cc, you kind of have to break. So, yeah, I'm just, I need more practice in that. <laughs> but it's fun. Wow. You and me both. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favorite uh, track? For the new courses? Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, I would have to say Yoshi's Island simply because that is a new track for everybody, regardless of whether you play a tour or not. This is not a tour track. This is a completely new track. Um, and I just happen to love the game Yoshi's Island. So this is based on yeah. that game from the Super Nintendo, which I just love that game so much. It's so cute and so fun. It's like just one of the best platformers in my opinion. And this, Yeah, it's an absolute classic. And what I also love about this track is, you know, it's a bit like the Zelda track or the Animal Crossing track that they released a few years ago. It's like a little bit different in terms of you're not collecting normal Mario Kart coins. You're collecting Yoshi coins, you know, and it makes a different sound when you collect them. Did you notice that when you played it? Yeah. I'm trying to, re- I'm trying to remember now. They're a blur. <laughs> and um, even the music, it's taken straight from the game. It's just, oh, it's so nostalgic. If you've played this, if you've yeah. ever played Yoshi's Island, if you're a fan, this track is just beautiful. Even the style, it's got those cool mountains in the background with the eyes and the frowny face. It's got all the enemies from the game and like little shy guys walking along on stilts and, and little prana plants running around. <laughs> it's just Make me want to replay the game <laughs> and, and the track. I want, I want to play them all now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's just lovely, honestly. So that, that is just definitely the standout for me. But they're all really good. I was really, really happy to see a GameCube title because there hasn't been any. There have not been any GameCube um, Double Dash tracks in the DLC so far. I don't know whether you noticed that or not. Is that right? No, I don't yeah. think I have. Huh. No. So Waluigi Stadium is the first from, from the GameCube era. We have, I think we have like other tracks in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe already. Like, yeah, in the core package. Baby, yeah, like Baby Park, I think, was the GameCube one, right? I'm pretty oh, sure. I love Baby Park. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's definitely a highlight. Um, but this is Waluigi Stadium, which is another pretty... I know I didn't actually... I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this track because I found it quite hard back in the day on the GameCube. Um, this time around, I found it a bit easier. And it's it's in a mud, it's like a muddy track. It's kind of like a bit like the Warrior Stadium tracks. It's like, yeah, it's kind of like yeah. the, uh, the next step, mm. that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But I think there's a lot of people who like Waluigi. So, you know, he's kind of got this little dedicated fan base. So I think it's nice to have him <laughs> included. Um. And as we said last week, he can easily ride the Mario Kart ride at Super Nintendo World. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 so go Waluigi. Um, Kirk, sorry, I know Trev and I uh, have been hogging the, the microphone for a few minutes here about Mario Kart. Have you played, I know you have played the new tracks, but what's your experience with Mario Kart in general, apart from Super Nintendo World, which we know you've done the virtual experience tour there? <laughs> Uh, most of my experience with Mario Kart, we, we've had most of the games, and mm-hmm. that is one of the big games that we use to break the family into Nintendo gaming, really, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because it was easy for the kids to pick up and play. So I, I kind of served as a, a coach to get mm-hmm. them started, and the and they quickly, uh, you know, got better than I was. Um, so <laughs> right. they, uh, I, every, every now and again, we'll pull it out. Um, my oldest son really likes it and plays it a lot. In fact, uh, the strategy has always been for the uh, Pure Nintendo Gaming Nights when we did it was I was going to pretend to play <laughs> nice. while he was the one who was making me look good. Yeah. Um, but, but that's really it. I, I barely know the names of any of the tracks. Uh, I've played most of them. Um, I, mm-hmm. you know, over time, I've gone through almost all of them. 
but uh, it, it's uh, only if they break it out and say, Dad, come on, hop on mm. this with hop yeah. on here with us while I play. Yeah, that's cool. I think, and I think Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, for me at least, is it's kind of the ultimate version. And it does have, you know, because over the years we've chopped and changed a few different things. But this one has kind of everything. I mean, apart from the fact that it's got almost all the trucks ever because of this DLC. But also it's really accessible. Like my kids, my youngest, he's nine, so he's not super young. We've been playing this for a few years, though. Mario Kart 8 is by no means a new game. And the accessibility for, for younger players is really good because you can turn on or off um, kind of that auto movement. You know how you can kind of turn on, I don't know what you call it exactly, but it's like your cart moves. Like if you don't press the accelerator, your cart will move. Just it, a little bit slower than if you were actually racing, but it just keeps you going. And you can also turn on a setting where you don't fall off the edges as easily. Um, and there's a few other little quality of life things, I guess, for, for younger players, which is really cool. So most of the time when we play, I think my eldest turns them off now he's good enough where he feels confident that he doesn't need them and i obviously don't have them on obviously because i'm so good no wait what are these settings i'm just yeah, learning you. about you, if you well <laughs> what Trav. so basically i'm just playing <laughs> okay you, you, had me you know trevor second. you can also put bumpers in the bowling alleys too <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have all kinds of things like this available in video games or not <laughs> yes, that is a good analogy. This is like the bumper, the bumper lanes of uh, of the Mario Kart world. So, yeah. So I think it's good. I think it's great because it just means everyone can play. It kind of evens it out a little bit. Um, yeah, it just makes it a bit more fun, you know. So, and so, uh, Trev, did you have a favorite of the new tracks? What are you thinking? Well, I like I like what you were saying about Yoshi's Island, mm-hmm. and. And I concur because, you know, brand new and based off a, a classic game that, you know, I really mm. like. But I always kind of like seeing some of the more uh, a primitive, uh, not, I don't want to say primitive, but based off primitive hardware. So like the GBA mm. course mm-hmm. or even like the DS one with those clunky polygons, mm. just to see how they've been cleaned up, you know, on the Switch and high def. They kind of yeah. they kind of jump out to me. Um I don't know if I'd say either of those are my favorites because they have what Mario Circuit and I can't think of the the Game Boy one. Um, but Riverside Park is the Game Boy. Yeah, game. I don't know if I'd, I'd say they're a favorite. I think I have to replay them a few more times and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'd definitely play them against real competition, not just the <laughs> yeah you know, the CPU or or in time attack mode. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, you know it's it's it just impressed me. Like I'm talking about. You know, I like the tour tracks. There's three of them. And then there's Yoshi Island. There's four. Then I have GBA and D. That's six. Six of the eight courses I'm debating between. Right. That's a good, yeah, that's a good problem and, to have, know, I think. Not even talking, <laughs> not even kind of like Waluigi Stadium or yeah, uh, exactly. DK Summit. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. DK I think Summit it's a good problem to have when mm-hmm. you can't decide. Like, I feel like the first DLC wave, and I'd have to look, but I feel like I had a clear favorite. And then as it went on, I'm like, oh, I got a few favorites. And then like the Mm -hmm. last one, it was just like, oh, they're all great. Yeah, (laughs) definitely. Yeah, it's going from strength to strength, really, I think. Um, This is a really good set. And I'm I'm a bit like you. Like Yoshi's Island is my favorite just because it is fresh and different and new and unique. Um, But, yeah, the three tour tracks are really good. I think Singapore Speedway is a bit of a standout in terms of the the three tour tracks just because it's very – I don't know if you notice this. It's very futuristic looking. There's like lots of neon lights. I think um, so. Yeah, it really had that that nightlife kind of. Mm-hmm. It was very well, uh, like animated. I don't mean like game animation, just like animated in terms of liveliness. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm not familiar enough with the cities themselves to recognize things, which I would have been in, say, London or New York or even Sydney, just because I've been to those cities and I know them. So it's interesting to see like these different cities and kind of get a feel for them and think, oh, you know, this is this is Bangkok or this is Amsterdam. This is really cool. So I love that they're kind of opening that up a bit to a wider kind of range, at least, which is cool. Can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> I'm going to be closing my review to say that probably the only negative of this um, wave is that we're now down to the last two waves. Like there are, I think it's six, right? There are a total of six waves that we're getting. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, we're, well, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to visualize this screen with the one, two. There's two more coming, I think. Yeah. So we're we're sort of over the halfway mark now. We only have two left. Yeah. So, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I will be interested to see what happens post DLC, post waves. But for now, 
loving it. So <laughs> um, can't wait to play against you, Trev. <laughs> yeah, well, I got I got to practice more. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I still have the switch sitting next to me. I did turn it off to record, but. Mm-hmm. I could turn That's it back okay. on easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you can play while we move on to our next topic because I th- – oh, no, no, you, you know about this one too actually. So this has been, as I said, a big week for Nintendo, at least for Mario, because we just celebrated Mario Day, which is March the 10th. And I think everyone knows it's because you write the MAR and then the one zero, and it looks like the word Mario, which is really cool. I have to tell you one thing, guys. I don't think you know this, um, and fans definitely won't know this, but let me just say – I think I'm the world's biggest Mario fan because I managed to have a child born on March the 10th. So, wow, yeah. I just love that. <laughs> yeah. uh, my son's birthday is March the 10th. So, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> so, you're going to induce labor on this day, no matter what. <laughs> but you didn't name him Mario. No, I thought that was too on the nose. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> yeah, yep. So, yeah, his birthday was last Friday, it was uh, on Mario Day which is a great day to be born, I think. Um, and, you know, the, that was the day the new tracks were released, so that was cool. It was also the day that we had a little mini Nintendo Direct for the final Mario movie trailer, what they're calling the final trailer, I guess, because the movie itself is coming out in kind of three, three-ish three weeks, I think, three and a half weeks, 6th of April anyway, pretty soon. Mm-hmm. So I guess I wanted to ask your opinion generally of the movie, of the trailer, the latest trailer, what are we thinking? What are we feeling? Maybe does Kirk want to have a go first since Trevor and I had kind of hogged the Mario Kart debate a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'm happy to do so. I think uh, the latest trailer, it seemed to me that it was appealing now almost entirely to fans of the games um, mm-hmm. because the whole thing was pretty much levels of, uh, of the Mario games. There was that prolonged segment of the Mario Kart battle, which looked mm-hmm. fantastic. I mean, if you want to go to the movie to see like on the big screen, what one of those races would be like in a cinematic way. They're going to totally nail that. I'm sure Mm -hmm. based on what we saw in the trailer, Um, it didn't really give a whole lot on the movie itself. And um, I I, I find it funny that they kind of really kept a lot of the Mario dialogue out uh, perhaps because of the controversy with uh, Chris Pratt playing the role, which I'm sure we'll discuss in a bit. (laughs) <laughs> um, but it, it, it was good enough for me to want to go see it. I mean, I, I'll may not see it opening weekend, but I'm, I'm curious to see if they're able to pull it off. And I think they will. It, it looks good. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I think it does look good. Would you say that you were planning to see it before this trailer already? Like this trailer yeah. did it? Yeah, okay. So this trailer didn't convince you. You were already going to see it. It just maybe helped a little kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, most of the people that they have in, in the parts, um, you know, looks good. I'm a huge fan of, of Keegan-Michael Key. I'm a fan of mm-hmm. Jack Black. And mm-hmm. uh, um, I, yeah, I, I think it's it looks like they're going to find a way to make a good movie out of a video game instead of just making the video game a movie. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Trev? Yeah, I um. Well, I was I was gonna see it no matter no matter what. Um, mm-hmm. Probably not opening weekend, just because I'm not too into to crowds. So like maybe like a, a Monday through Thursday, one of those days. Um, well, not Tuesday. That's usually discount day. And that's crowded. Anyway, like they do that in America as well. That's that's like cheap Tuesday for us over here in Australia. Yeah, <laughs> Tuesday's kind of like a like a Friday almost. But, um, <laughs> So yeah, that first Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday, uh, I'm gonna mm-hmm. catch <laughs> the <Cool>. film. Um, <laughs> it looked good. I agree with Kirk. It kind of was telling that there wasn't a ton of Mario di- dialogue. Mm. Um, and what I heard, I'm still not sold on it. But you know, everyone else sounded good, and you know, you can see the the money on the screen, so to speak, in terms of the mm-hmm. presentation. So. Mm. I'm sure it'll be be fun, and I bet you that, like, the more – because we're big Nintendo fans. We've been playing Mm -hmm. Mario for decades. Mm -hmm. So you're more casual player or, you know, kids who don't even really know, like, the games maybe. I bet you they won't care about the Mm. voice controversy. True. That's a good point. Yeah. No, I don't think they will at all, really. There's there's no reason for them to if they haven't uh, been kind of involved heavily with Mario um, and his classic gaming voice, then this to them is just it's just the movie voice, yeah. 
<laughs> which they did have. I recognized the uh, the Charles Martinet, the woohoo. I think they had a little. Uh, I did, snippet. yeah. I wondered about that because I heard that as well, and I wasn't sure if that was Chris Pratt kind of emulating no, or impersona- impersonating. No or <laughs> if it <laughs> was, I'm good. impressed. But I, yeah, I it, sounded, believe it, it did sound good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. I think. For me, I mean, I've enjoyed all the trailers and I am I think we all know I'm a huge Mario fan, right? My kid was born on Mario Day. No, I am a huge Mario fan. It was It's my Wait, favorite what? game. <laughs> <laughs> no, my favorite game of all time is, um, is is Mario. So I'm a huge, huge fan. That's fine. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to the movie. I was already going to see it probably within the first week. I will see it as quickly as I can. I do have kids, so I have to make sure it aligns with their activities, obviously. But they're both keen as well, so that's good. So <laughs> there might be a struggle um, to get to the movies. And I think in Australia, our school holidays start the Friday before it opens. So we're on we're on midterm break here, which maybe is the same over there. I'm not sure. So it'll be quite busy and, uh, yeah, <laughs> they'll be doing quite well. It's a good time for a movie over here anyway. But we'll definitely be going. And uh, for me, I suppose, I don't – I hope that there's more in the movie than what we've been seeing because it does seem like we've seen a lot in terms of Mario, the Mario Kart side of things um, and even the Donkey Kong world peach and you know we've seen a few yoshis running around in different trailers i f- assume there's more that we haven't seen like you know maybe daisy's in there or maybe rosalina is in there or something cool or special or unique so i'm looking forward to seeing what that might be and like kirk said i'm a huge fan of of some of these actors especially jack black so and i love his portrayal of bowser i think he's just going to be the standout <laughs> absolutely yeah. and this trailer had i think the first part of this trailer before it got to that gaming element where Donkey Kong and Mario jumping around on platforming elements and then the Mario Kart kind of battle scene happened. There was a really good scene with Bowser talking to his minions, <laughs> which is quite funny, not knowing some of the names of his minions. And, uh, you know, it seems like the plot is kind of given to us a little bit. Hopefully there's a bit more to it than Mario and Luigi start off in the real world. They kind of somehow unlock a portal to the Mushroom Kingdom, they get separated. Luigi gets kidnapped by Bowser. Bowser's obviously trying to get some stars, you know, collect the power stars, whatever, so he can take over the world or something. And Mario has to kind of earn his place as a hero in this world and learn how to defeat Bowser. The end. So hopefully it's well, more. Now I don't have to see it. You just <laughs> I know. <ended> up. You <laughs> saved oh. me 12 bucks. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> no, I think there'll be more than that. but And it'll be interesting to see how they pull it off. And like we've just said, whether Chris Pratt will be – annoying or not but i think we've we've talked about this before where it might be weird at the start to see or to hear chris pratt's voice as mario but maybe as the movie goes it will just become normal you know i think for example and this is getting really detailed because most of the movie looks pretty amazing like you said the dollars are on the screen and that's great but they've also it looks like they're pretty faithful to the game but maybe have put a little spin on it as well like for example very small minor detail but peach's dress is slightly different in its colors to the classic peach dress like it's got a uh, i think the the lining at the bottom is is lighter instead of darker or something it's the opposite of what it normally is and it's like very very slightly very subtle they've just changed it up a little tiny bit so it's like they've put their own little kind of mark on it and i think that's what they're doing with mario as well just making him a little bit kind of different just for this purpose um and whether that leads to sequels who knows i guess that will depend on the success of the movie but it will be very interesting interesting to see whether it's just us fans who go and like it or if we hate it and it's just the uh people who aren't huge mario fans who go and see it and love it or not i think there's a lot there'll be a lot to unpack (laughs) once it's out (laughs) yeah i think it's going to be very interesting how did you notice that peach thing? That sounds like a uh, like a 20, 20 things in Mario <laughs> that you missed. Or I wish like I that. could say I noticed it myself, but I did watch a breakdown. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we watched some breakdown trail of the trailer. Yeah. I, I, we've done it for all the trailers. I do like to nice. to do that. So, um, there's some really good breakdowns that talk about. Um, 
you know, all the details in terms of which enemies are in the background. And if you slow it down, and I'm not doing this myself, okay, I'm not, I'm a huge fan, but I'm not, I don't have time for this, but someone else has done it for me anyway. <laughs> but they slow down the trailer, they zoom in, they look at all the details, like the flags and what they mean and which enemies are hiding in the background there. And, you know, even the Cooper Troopers and the looks on their faces and, you know, there's hmm. the different, the different colored ones, like traditionally in the games, for example, the green Cooper Troopers are the ones who would walk to the edge of the platform and then just walk off the edge, right, in the platforming yeah. games. And then the uh-huh. red ones, they just move back and forth. They don't walk off. So they're a little bit smarter, I guess. <laughs> and it looks like <laughs> it looks like in the trailer the green ones are a bit, like, more cowardly. They're kind of shaking their shell in one of the trailers, whereas the red ones are a bit more robust, I guess, or, I don't know, braver, I suppose. <laughs> so there's little things in there that I think they've taken seriously. And even... This was in the breakdown as well, uh, in that Mario Kart section of this latest trailer, the really cool uh, section, which reminded me of like, I don't know, is it June or something? Like all these like races in these kind of big vehicles with weapons on them. It just reminded me of some kind of apocalyptic thing. But anyway, <laughs> there's a there's a Cooper with a red, sorry, a, a blue helmet that's got spikes on it, like a blue shell from Mario Kart. Did you guys yeah. notice that? Yeah. I did actually, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if that's going to, if that's just a little kind of Easter egg or if it's going to, if he's going to do something and, you know, race to the start of whatever they're racing on and blow everything up in blue shell style. I you don't have know. to see the 3D showing so it flies right at your face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, um, I am very excited. I think you can tell. I'm looking forward to it. Did you have any other thoughts on the trailer or the movie, Trev, or... Kirk, maybe. I, I think, well, you said, is Rosalina going to be in it? But I kind of, mm-hmm. because wasn't that a Luma in the cage? <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So I would think, I mean, she's like their their leader, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, so the- will she be there to like rescue? I don't know. Maybe. Very well could be. Yeah. That's kind of the first thing when I when I saw him, he's like, you just stay here till we die or whatever. I can't remember the <laughs> exact line. Yeah. And I'm like, oh. She's going to be, and I know they only showed, you know, Mario saving Luigi and, and you know, Peach is with them, but I, I feel like she's got to be there. Mm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. I think there's a strong possibility of that. Absolutely. Yeah. That that whole thing, the whole scene with the Luma in the, the that prison, I suppose, that volcanic lair where they're caged is, yeah, it's kind of dark. <laughs> <laughs> hanging by the the chains in these like little cages there's no escape <laughs> yeah i do love the penguins though i hope they have uh quite a presence in the movie because they're just great oh. it's <laughs> so good it led us on a bit of a i don't know what do you call it a rabbit hole yesterday because the breakdown referred to the penguins jokingly as penlings which is, you know, that classic Benedict Cumberbatch uh, documentary where he calls penguins, like, different names. He doesn't call them penguins. He calls them penwings and penlings. He changes it every time and he can't say it properly. <laughs> so let us down a little bit of our YouTube rabbit hole. Anyway. You'll have to link this video when you <laughs> yeah, post our uh, <laughs> if you haven't, If you haven't seen it, look up, uh, yeah, Benedict Cumberbatch penlings. It's very funny. So... <laughs> That's the end of that chapter, I think. Um, thank you for that. So let's talk about our next topic, which is E3, or I guess in general, conferences and gaming conferences. So E3 is coming up, as we all know. It's coming in June, so it's sort of under three months now, I think, or around three months. It's um, It's been going on since 1995, so it's been around quite a long while. And we've briefly mentioned last week that Nintendo won't be present. I think... Sony and Microsoft are also not going to be there. Is that correct? The big three kind of aren't there. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo all mm. said they will not be present. Although I, I think I saw Microsoft doing something not at the like they, the Microsoft Theater or something apparently is nearby, so that that week they okay. may be doing their own thing from there. Mm-hmm. So I suppose I'm going to look to you, Kirk, a little bit on this one, just because I know you have some thoughts about it and we've also been invited to attend e3 which is awesome and we've been in the past i think you've been you've been you've both been right i think yes yes yeah 
Cool. Yes, I haven't um, had the opportunity just yet, which I will hopefully in the future. So, Kirk, are you thinking, what are you thinking for this year? Let's start with this year's one and then we can talk about kind of the future or the past or whatever you want to talk about. But for this year, I mean, are we surprised about Nintendo's lack of presence or even Sony and Microsoft? What do you think about that? I'm not surprised because I, I think Nintendo would have gone this direction anyway, even if there hadn't been a COVID that that canceled mm-hmm. the one year and then went virtual. Um, and I say that because I, I've been in this exact situation before going back to previous sites that I've written for where I used to cover Macworld Expo in San Francisco every year. Mm-hmm. And then Apple realized that when they could have their own online press conferences, basically, and they were going to get as many eyeballs on that. Why are they spending the money to go to a conference, um, mm-hmm. to, even if they are the, the main attraction, uh, when it could be that they didn't even have anything ready at that point? Now they can do it on their own schedule. They don't have to do it when the Macworld Expo was taking place. So Apple pulled and the, they tried to keep it going for two or three years and eventually it died because without Apple, the other, the other big publishing companies weren't going and then people stopped going and that was it. Wow. Okay. Um, so and I, I could see how we might be heading towards that with E3, but I also think um, I'm one of the few people, it seems, who hope that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. There's this weird... Um, reaction to it I've been finding on other websites and in forums where it's like people are celebrating the death of E3. Like, it's, really? we don't want this anymore. It's never going to be what it was. Um, and I hope it dies and we just have whatever this uh, summer of games or whatever this other thing is um, that's going on. As, as a gaming journalist, I should probably pay more attention to it. So, um, I'm admitting my failings there. Um, but I, I, I don't understand that because I think that these shows bring tremendous value, even without the big companies. My favorite thing to do at an E3 wasn't to go to Nintendo or wasn't to go to Sega's booth. It was to go to these smaller companies, the, the, the tiny booths, sometimes even just like one tiny kiosk with mm-hmm. one developer who had a game and you could find a lot of great stuff that way. Cool. Um, and these companies depend on the foot traffic that's coming in because of the Nintendos and the Sonys and the Microsofts. Mm. People are going in for that, but you can't spend all day there or they may be too crowded. So you're walking around the show floor and you're discovering a lot of other great things. And that's why I want these shows to continue is because, um, you know, these smaller indie developers aren't you know, there. There's like the, the indie showcase. There are things like that. Um, but they're never going to get the attention that they get as just kind of like riding on the coattails of these bigger names at, at something like E3. Mm. So um, I, I'm really interested to go this year uh, because I want to see what Reed Pop is going to do with this because they got to be smart enough to understand um, that they're going to need to make it um, attractive to the larger companies so that the smaller companies come in, but also make sure that the smaller companies are still attending. And I think one of the things it looks like they're doing is focusing on the industry aspect of it as opposed to the fandom. Um, E3 kind of became a the, the gamers, the fans are going to tune in and watch this, and this is going to be a big thing, and we're going to get all these eyeballs and it kind of got lost that this is where the business transactions are supposed to be happening. It was originally a B2B show, right? Um, developers were meeting publishers and PR companies were, were meeting media. And, and that aspect of it was making sure that the connections that need to happen at an expo like this were still happening. And that can't happen virtually. Um, so... The, splitting it into um, industry only days and then gamer days, I think was a good idea. Um, and now they've announced this digital component, which I think is also a good idea, except we don't have any details on anything yet. So right mm-hmm. now it's all, well, let's see how Reed Pop's going to pull this off. I think that they're making the right decisions. Um, but until I see what companies have bought into it, I don't know exactly what, what's going to happen down the road. Mm, yeah. That will, that's thank you. <laughs> that's great. I agree. I think. Well, I mean, I do agree. I've never been, so it's hard for me to say. But it sounds perfectly uh, logical. And in terms of those small developers, I wonder 
whether that will impact this year. I do like that they've separated the days into media and kind of public forum. And I'm very interested to see what this digital kind of week looks like, especially because it is a whole week, right? It's kind of beyond the actual conference itself, I think. The dates uh, for online yeah. is like, yeah, it starts a bit earlier. It's like the 11th to the 17th. And yeah, then, I think it starts on this, is it the Sunday beforehand <laughs> and then runs through the following Saturday? Yeah. So details are scarce at the moment. Is that what you're saying about the digital event? Yeah, they yeah. haven't an, announced like what the events are going to be or again, what companies. I think the only company that I have any confirmation on is Ubisoft has said that they will be there, which which is great. Mm-hmm. That's a big name. Mm. Um, and then, you know, if we could also get like the the Atlases, I don't think Sega's weighed in, the Koei Tecmos, if, if companies like that are showing up. And again, all these companies have solid uh, pre- presence on the Nintendo then it's still relevant to us and, and we can, um, you know, get a lot of good games that, like I said, then also dig deeper into the smaller companies to see what, what they're uh, showing off. Um, but Reed Pop have said that they tend to hold that close to the vest until closer to the show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wish they wouldn't do that. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll see what happens. Mm. Do you think there's a chance that the likes of Nintendo would participate in the digital side of things? Or do you think their statement saying we're not participating in E3 would also cover the digital event? I think it would cover digital as well. I -hmm. I can't imagine Nintendo would want to not be there in person, but still kind of like be on the fringes of it. Mm. Because if they're going to be there, they got to be big. Nintendo can't just be like a small presence and something like that. They've they've got to be like one of the what's the linchpin. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I imagine they won't be part of that as well. Plus, they, it, it would um, kind of contrary. I mean, it, it's counter. Or it it would conflict with their directs. Yes. Yeah. Because exactly. you know they, they they like it when that. Uh, they can announce a direct right ahead of time and still get all kinds of people tuning in and get some excitement around that as opposed to being part of something else. Mm, yeah, good point. I wonder, because I think Nintendo's statement said something along the lines of the conference didn't uh, like align with our plans or something kind of to that effect, huh. which is interesting. Um, you know, we know there's a lot happening, you know, in the, in the lead up to E3, kind of, we've, we, Mario movies in April, we've got the new Zelda title coming soon, and everyone's speculating about, you know, the next Switch, um, which you would think might be the perfect place to launch it, but maybe they, maybe they're not ready to launch it, or maybe they're not ready to, maybe it's, they want to do it on their own terms, like you said, like with their own direct or whatever it might be. Um, I don't know, you can read into it so many different ways. And I guess Nintendo also likes to keep things close to their chests. So. Yeah. 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 And I think if they, like, let's say for, if they just happen to coincidentally be putting out a new system mm-hmm. right around E3, I would imagine they would want to be there because then they could get, like, uh, even just demo versions of that system into people's hands. That's a great way to get a lot of people seeing mm. something at once and trying out a physical product. And you can't do that with the Direct, obviously. Mm-hmm. The games, you could show them off, but you can't really show off physical hardware. So I think once they have something like that, then it would be worth it to them to come. Because um, like I said, if Nintendo's going to be there, they're going to be there big, and that is very expensive. I've, I've seen the crew that they build and bring into these things. They're bringing in hundreds of people. Wow, um, yeah. I was at a hotel they were at once, and there were there was groups of 50 people getting off buses at the same time. <laughs> Um, coming back from the show. Uh, so, and they have these giant booths that, you know, uh, Trevor, you might have a better spatial uh, abilities than I have, but they, they were hundreds and hundreds of feet, thousands of square feet. Um, so, I mean, it cost them a lot of money to do that show. It, they, it would really have to be something that would uh, uh, help them uh, justify that cost. And having a game like... Uh, Legend of Zelda um, 2 that's coming out um, a month beforehand, and then mm. maybe not anything really exciting immediately following it, mm-hmm. then, you know, that that kind of makes it so perhaps that's not worth that particular time. Yeah, that, it, that does make perfect sense. I think we, we even mentioned last week, we don't really know what's happening post-Zelda for Nintendo. There's not, I don't think there's a whole lot scheduled for the second half of the year. We've had such a kind of a plethora of huge games recently with, you know, last year we had two Pokemon titles 
we had Fire Emblem Engage earlier this year. Um, Zelda's coming up. You know, Kirby's had a couple of titles with Forgotten Land and now Return to Dreamland. There's been a lot, I and mean, even Mario and Rabbids. I guess you could you could count that that amongst there. We're all looking for a new Mario game, but anyway. Huh. We got a <laughs> Pikmin Four. When Pikmin, Pikmin Four. 4 yes, out? I think that's July actually. So that is yeah, close. Okay. So yeah, that's yeah. pretty close. I, that is pretty close. Mm. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one. I did watch a breakdown of that too, actually, yesterday. Just FYI. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really interesting. It's funny the things they point out that you don't even notice, like like Peach's dress in the Mario trailer. Um, Trev, do you you've been to a couple of E threes over the years as well? Uh, you, well, I've been to one. You've so just I'm been to the one. Okay. Yeah. How many? Yeah, I went to the, the last E three proper, twenty nineteen, uh, with right. Kurt okay. and uh, Harrison. Mm-hmm. And so I don't have as much, you know, to go on, but I have been following E three. Because when I was a kid, you know, I was really into gaming magazines. So I remember, mm. you know, in 1995, this big old, you know, they all had spreads from these big old booths and it was exciting. And um, so, yeah, long story short, I agree with pretty much everything Kirk said. I do think, I do think E3 will survive. I mean, they were able to survive a couple of years in Atlanta when attendance was low you know, in the late nineties before going back to LA. So I figure if they could survive that, they can really survive anything, but I don't think it's ever going to be where it was at its peak. Mm. And I think a lot of it has to do with opening it to the public a few years ago. Mm. Now they are correcting that to some extent by having separate days, but I think that was a very short term solution you know, they got a, a spike in attendance the next year. They won the battle, but I think ultimately they lost the war because it's just very difficult for professionals. That, that's what I noticed. You know, unless you get appointments, you know, it's it's tough to, to navigate the floor. And mm-hmm. that's, in a way, it worked out good for the small developers because Nintendo booth so packed, you're going to find those, you know, tables with one monitor and, you know, one solo developer. So... In that sense, it was good, but it is, it was overwhelming in a sense with a lot of people there who were just there, you know, as fans. And I'm not knocking them. I would have loved to have done that when I was a kid. But I, I do think E3 fared best when it was a professionally focused thing where you can build those contacts, get that hands on experience, you know, develop a working relationship. So, mm. I do think E3 will will survive, but I think we'll be maybe looking back to to 2019 as maybe the last traditional E3 proper. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and I guess they they are trying new things. They've got the two days. They've got the digital side of things, which I think we all know in 2023. There's a lot of these online components, even like you were saying about um, the Mac. What was it called? Mac World? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mac World. Yeah. Sounds like a game. Um, yes. <laughs> which in some be- ways it was. <laughs> what kind of what year was Mac World? When did that wrap up? Just out oh. of interest. Boy, um, you asked me too fast. I want to say the early <laughs> two, like 2012, 2013. Okay. Was that? Yeah. I mean, that's I'm going of, to look it up now. Yeah, uh-huh. that's interesting because I like the fact that, you know, Apple knew back then that they wanted to be sort of more online. You know, it's taken us a while, even though we've had the internet. I mean, the internet's been around since the 60s, but it's been around since the kind of 1990s in Hey, I thought Al Gore invented it. (laughs) I don't know Uh, anything about that. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, Um, it's taken us a while. Apple announced that their final Macworld Expo was 2009. Wow. Okay. And then the um, on October 14th, IDG, the company that did it, um, suspended Macworld indefinitely. So mm-hmm. the last one would have been in, when did they do it? Was it June or January? Uh, maybe March. I, they kept bouncing them around. But yeah, 2014 <laughs> would have been the last one. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, the, I, yeah. So I, I didn't think it survived that long without Apple. I'm sort of surprised. Mm. Um but yeah, it's a few years. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a few years. And I mean, Nintendo kind of hasn't had that big presence for a few years at E3 anyway. They've they've kind of relied a bit more on um, 
you know, the digital side of things as well. So kind of a bit like the Mac. Yeah, sorry, like Apple. I mean, there's other expos too. Like we got PAX, PAX mm-hmm. East coming up uh, mm-hmm. end of the month, and then there's PAX West. And so I, I feel like there's... GDC. Yeah, there's just more... E3 is no longer like... It's, it's not like isolated. I mean, there was even when E3 originated, there was other things, but, you know, Tokyo Game Show or whatever. But I feel like there's a lot of, based on the emails I get, I feel like there's always some kind of little expo going on somewhere in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. You know, even if it's not necessarily Nintendo focused or, or even gaming, you know, primarily gaming focused, it might just be technology. But mm-hmm. I feel like there's just too many avenues. And maybe E3 can't command that that slice of the pie that they did mm. in the past. Yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah, there is always a lot going on. So maybe E3 is not yeah the the one conference to rule them all anymore. I suppose. Yeah, interesting. And um, I've never been to a PAX um, since Repop mm-hmm. does those, so I don't know if that's like what they will scale it towards, or or if they still want to have this be like a a completely separate show with a separate feel, as opposed to like a a PAX mid year or whatever they mm-hmm. would end up calling it. They have Eastern mm-hmm. Flash Break. So the um, same the same people are running both of those events. Is that what yes. you said? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is I think Repop's first year doing it. Um, first okay. year doing E three. Yeah. Well, that would make sense then. If they kind of got that experience with PAX, then they they might merge the two sort of thing, or at least align them in terms of how they deliver the the actual events. I suppose. Yeah. Um, are you interested in attending PAX, Kirk? Um, well, <laughs> I, I am because one of them's in Seattle, and mm-hmm. I'm a Seahawks fan. So, Ooh, if I, nice. <laughs> anything to get me closer to the team, I would, yeah, I would, I would do that. But I, I haven't yet. And mm. uh, well, that's something you could, you know, yeah, I, I'd consider. I think definitely. I, have you, Trev? Have you been to a PAX event? Uh, yeah. Well, I've been uh, like E3. I've only been to one. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to say, I did it. It was back in 2015. Right. Okay. And in a way, it was good because it. It prepped me for E3. It's not as big, but, you know, being to that and being to other, you know, expos and just other professional fields kind of, you know, gave me like that, that base tan. So I wouldn't mm. get burnt at E3. <laughs> um, it was, it was fun. And, you know, there's a lot of similarities in terms of function. Like Nintendo's booth was just as slammed at PAX as it was at E3. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, and and it taught me that you know appointments are good if you're there professionally because PAX is a, you know, it's it's a public thing too. So, mm-hmm. um, definitely not good if you don't like crowds or if you're, mm-hmm. you know, uh, still cautious with you know, uh, COVID strands or whatever. But it was mm-hmm. fun. I would actually go back just because I, I feel like it's almost in my back door in Boston. Mm. Um, so I haven't gone back yet, but I would be more likely to go back to PAX for convenience uh, sake than I probably would for E3. Yeah. Yeah. And not just because Kirk snores like a, well, uh, um, <laughs> different story for a different time. <laughs> Say that for the outtakes. Um. <laughs> There's a recording of it somewhere. Maybe we'll... Uh, un- We'll add that to a podcast. Yeah. Uh, but- that should be a Patreon reward for our top backer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Again, yeah. I need to remind you, Trevor, those days are over. <laughs> whoever, that's true. Whoever's going to be, whoever's going to be rooming with me at E3 will not... <laughs> Will not have that. Uh, not have that experience. Hopefully, <laughs> good to hear. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it's great to know that there's a lot to look forward to. So, PAX East is happening soon, right? The end of yeah, end of this. Yeah. I, I forget the exact date. End of the month, though, right? Mm, okay. Yeah. Cool. And then we've got E3 in June. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot happening. And even if if we're there or not, but I think we will be at least at E3, which is yeah. great. So let's see. So yeah. we're recording this March 11th, um, and Pexy looks like it starts March 23rd. It's mm-hmm. about two weeks. Yeah. You give it. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's exciting. I mean, either way, there's a lot for fans and for 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 journalists to look forward to covering. Um, and I think yeah, we'll see a lot of interesting things 
unfolded, I guess. Uh, it'll be interesting also to see what happens over the next course of not just this year, but the, but next year, like how E3 goes, whether they change it up for next year, what you know the big players like Nintendo think they want to do for those kinds of events. Um, it's just, it's all changing so much, I guess partly because of COVID, but also just the times they are changing. Yeah. So, yeah. You gotta keep it fresh. Nintendo right? does have a booth at PAX. I don't know how big it is, and I don't think mm. there's any uh, like information on what they might be showing. But they mm-hmm. are going to be represented at PAX to some extent. Cool. Wonder if Pikmin will be there. That'd be cool. That'd <laughs> I be assume cool. Zelda will be there <laughs> at least. That's yeah. you know. Yeah, Zelda, yeah. That's what they think. But Nintendo, mm-hmm. they march to the beat of their own drum. It also wouldn't shock me if there was nothing. Mm, true. <laughs> like, it yeah. could be a ton of Zelda or no Zelda. I don't think they're. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd expect both. They might want to keep it all as a surprise, you know. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. Um, any final thoughts on the conference side of things? Either Kirk or Trev? No. Uh, no I think no. we. No. I think. Covered. It was pretty well said. Yeah. No, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, well, we have a few minutes left, so let's go on to another topic which we just want to touch on the sales that are happening right now so the 3ds and wii u e-shop is closing very very soon i think it's got about two more weeks to go i think it's the 27th yeah. of march and i know a lot of us are quite as trev in particular are very upset about this so yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a huge deal i know even though we've known about it for a while like they gave us uh, quite a few months notice yeah like a long time um it's still it's still coming as a bit of a shock that it's actually all wrapping up and some companies are responding with sales on the eShop which is pretty cool um so I know we you reported on one Kirk during the week which is the Chemco sales and I think there's another one happening that we know of so far. And obviously we've got a couple weeks left, so there may even be more. But do we just want to touch on that a little bit? What are your thoughts, Kirk, on the on the on the closure and the sales? And have we picked up anything? I guess is the other question. That might be more for you, Trev, because I know you've been dabbling a lot in that space. But Kirk, did you want to start with the sales? Yeah. Um, I, well, I think first of all, the best approach to it is if if you have a 3ds or a Wii U and you want to. Uh, to take advantage of any sales, just log into the shops and, and see what's available. Because mm. I imagine, you know, a bunch of companies that, that haven't announced anything have still uh, greatly reduced their prices. Mm. I know we did cover the Chemco, um, who put out a, a slew of uh, retro kind of JRPG games, um, uh, a lot of which are really good, um, have reduced, uh, I think they, it was 14, they have 14 of their 3DS games on sale at 50% off and two Wii U games. Mm. Um, now, a lot of those are also available for the Switch and other devices, but this is your chance if you still have those um, systems to go ahead and get them at reduced cost, mm-hmm. uh, even if you're not going to play them right away. And honestly, because they, they do have the retro graphics, the 3DS, I always thought, was a really good match for, for their approach to the visuals of games, mm-hmm. to the games they publish. Um, so I, I would recommend that. I know that Capcom... Um, it's been reported that Capcom has reduced a lot of their games to, I think, two ninety nine, dollars um, And that includes, like, a lot of the Phoenix Wright games available for the 3DS that were are fantastic. Um, wow. So it's a good chance to, to wow. pick those up, too. But, yeah, I, w- I go in and check that out. Uh, there's got to be something in there um, to, you know, help prolong the life of those devices that, that I love so much. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Trav, have you picked up anything recently? I, I, yeah, I have, and I'm and I get a wish list for <laughs> these last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I agree with Kirk on the Chemco stuff. We, I think we cover probably more Chemco than most sites. Mm-hmm. And um, what's cool on the 3DS is they don't have, you know, like the uh, the Switch has like the microtransactions where you can, well, it's like paid DLC basically, yeah. which can be tempting to do. Um but it also adds to the price. You know, the base price is always higher, too. So the 3DS games are cheaper. And there's a few that I think are only on – a lot of them are on Switch, but there's a few that you can only find on mobile. So yeah. if you're into that um, – and I agree, they look better on the 3DS, too. So I'm going to grab a couple of those. Um, I grabbed a Shovel Knight I on saw, the 3DS yes. for two ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I need to get that. Mm-hmm. And – you know, why would I grab that when I already have Shovel Knight? Well, first of all, this has 
uh, you know, some of the DLC, but I just love the, like the, the stereoscopic 3d effects. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these games on, on 3ds, even if they're available elsewhere, you know, like the 3d classics from Nintendo or, or Sega, mm-hmm. you know, I'm inclined to pick them up just cause I really like that effect. Um, so yeah, Shovel Knight was my latest pickup. There's a couple virtual console games that haven't found their way over to Switch Online mm-hmm. uh, that I'm probably going to grab. And I've looked more at the 3DS than the Wii U, but I probably should check out the Wii U because I have a lot more space on the Wii U <laughs> than the 3DS. I think it maxes out at, I don't know what size the, the card is, SD card, but Mm. On the Wii U, I have a terabyte hard drive, so I have all the space in the world for <laughs> yeah, maybe like a Monster Hunter game or mm. you know one of those big titles that I didn't play back in the day, but just would like to have you know grab it cheap because that's a that's a Capcom game too, and I think that's probably what is it like three bucks something like that. Mm. Yeah, so definitely worth picking up. And I, I saw a question on Twitter about the eShop closure. Do you, and I don't know if you guys know this or not. It's fine if you don't. But do do we know whether once it closes, if you've previously purchased a game, can you re-download it? Like talking about space, right? Because sometimes you have to free up some space by downloading yeah. a game. But previously you could always jump back in and download it again for free. I'm guessing that's not going to be possible. Or, or is it? I don't know. Do you have any insight into that? For the foreseeable future, that is going to be, they are going to keep that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you'll be able to go in and see what you've archived, or because yeah. you can basically go in in the memory management and it'll show base basically every game, every demo you've ever downloaded mm-hmm. throughout the system's life. Unless it's like a demo that's got delisted or something, then it won't it won't mm-hmm. show up. But yeah, um, so yeah, they they say for the foreseeable future, I imagine. <sighs> Yeah, I, I think it'll stay up for a fair amount of time because okay, you are going to have to be shuffling things, yeah, especially yeah. on on 3DS or even Wii U for that matter. I think you can only have like maybe 300 icons or something, which oh, okay. sounds like a ton, and it is. But yeah. like, if you, if you reviewed a lot of games, yeah. you'd be surprised yeah. how quickly that fills up. I think on the 3DS, it's a little bit more, maybe like 315. <laughs> okay, it's an odd number, but fair but enough. Yeah, yeah. well... <laughs> I kind of, I'm guessing on that, but it's over 300 because mm. everyone online says, oh, it maxes at 300. It doesn't. I'll confirm that that's inaccurate. Right. Um, I don't have an exact number, but I did count at my peak. I think I had like 312. So. <laughs> well, there you go. You heard it here first. The 3DS, number of games possible. or <laughs> number of icons. It, it is more than three, no matter how adamant and convincing people <laughs> sound. Yeah. Tr- trust me on that. Cool. Thank you. We have it under good authority. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah you're, gonna, you're gonna have to archive because, especially yeah. too, like if you want to grab some of the 3DS retail games, I've already spiked in price. Mm-hmm. So if you want to grab like a rare, a retail game for like thirty, forty bucks, you know, you're gonna want to make sure you have the space for that because those games mm-hmm. can take up, you know, several thousand, whatever the measurement is. So, mm-hmm. yeah, units. <laughs> you know, know speaking of retails, one of the things I, I wish that they had done, like um, when, when they first announced this, I went in to see if there were some games that I could download, old games that I may have gotten rid of that I thought, you know, I, I'm going to get them digitally and put them back on here. There are a bunch of games that I aren't available in the eShop. They were only available physically. And mm. that started to drive me nuts as I was looking. So I ended up just bailing. Like uh, I wanted both of the, do you remember the Project Deck Zone games? Mm. I do. That yeah. they're the crossover fighting games with um, the, with these absolutely story, bonkers stories. And, and <laughs> they were fun, but I traded them in at some point to get something better and regretted it later. But you can't get them in the eShop, at least not, not last time I checked. Wow. So I wish that everything had been made available digitally. And I, it, that's the way on the Switch now, right? Mm. Is there anything you can buy physically that you can't get in the eShop? Nothing I know of. I think the only thing is, it was in the launch window. They had like a Skylanders uh, kit. Mm. Like I think oh, that's yeah, one of the, the rare games because you can't buy it right. uh, digitally. But yeah. that's the exception. 
But I, okay. I would have pumped a lot more money into the eShop if more things had, had been available. <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. I didn't realize that myself, actually, so that's good to know. And good that they've kind of changed it apart from that one kind of uh, outlier. But yeah. yeah. Or maybe switch. Labo. Maybe Labo you can't get digitally because of the, yeah, you need the, mm. the cardboard. But. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, that could be true. Oh, yeah, maybe, look at those yeah. Kemco games. Grab Shovel Knight. Uh, grab Apollo Justice or the Ace Attorney trilogy. That's such a good value. Mm-hmm. Oh, my mm. goodness. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Oh, yeah. If I didn't have it, I'd be all over it. <laughs> yes. Such a good value. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, well, I mean, we're, we've got a couple of weeks, so let's kind of keep track of that. And maybe we can talk about it again next mm-hmm. week in terms of any other kind of updates or sales or new games that we've discovered um for now i suppose uh, has anyone got anything they want to say before we close off just that i am playing into uh for next issue um to do a a piece on uh 3ds or wii u games that we Mm want to see move to the switch because once the Mm -hmm. shops are closed some of those games are going to be left behind Mm-hmm. So we're working on a little, just a little fun spread of like, you know, I don't know, top 10 mm-hmm. uh, 3DS Wii U eShop games we want on the Switch right now. Or something like that. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right now. That, that sounds great. Uh, Kirk, anything? <laughs> Last, week. Last week. <laughs> anything from you, Kirk, before we close off? No, oh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll let us wrap it up. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you both. Um, if you like the show, please leave us a review. We are on all the mainstreaming services such as Spotify, Amazon, and Apple. And also on YouTube, we have our Twitter account, so please follow us at Pure Nintendo. If you want to support the magazine, please do so over at patreon.com slash Pure Nintendo. And for now, thank you both very, very much for joining me on this week's show. And we'll see everyone again next week. Thank you and game on. Bye.